Hello, and welcome back to another tutorial about the Korg WaveState Native. In this tutorial, we are going to take a look at how we can use MIDI controllers with the WaveState Native so that we have more control over the WaveState Native. So let's load up the WaveState Native VST. So here it is. When you loaded the WaveState Native, the MIDI controller isn't working directly on all the parameters that are available. You have to set that up to yourself. Uh, and you have to only do that one time, but it is a necessary step to use it with a MIDI controller. So let's look how that works in Ableton Live. For this tutorial, I'm going to use the uh, Ableton Push that you can see over here. And I'm also using two other MIDI controllers, the Native Complete S. 61 and a MIDI fighter twister but we are going to use the Ableton Push 2 because the OLED screen will show you what kind of parameters we are assigning to it so that's much more convenient than, than using a MIDI fighter twister for instance without the visual feedback. So when you first start using MIDI controllers in Ableton you have to assign the MIDI controller to Ableton Live for the first time. You can do that in the options menu, go to preferences and go to the link tempo and MIDI tab. This is basically where you set up your MIDI controllers for use in uh, Ableton Live. Probably you will already have done that, so then you can skip to the next chapter. If you didn't do that, then there are two sections that are really important. When you buy a MIDI controller, you have to say uh, which kind of control service you are going to use on the input and the output MIDI port. And there's a huge list of control services that is default supported in Ableton. Um, well, you can see it over here. There are a lot of uh, MIDI controllers already available. So just select the MIDI controller that you want to use from this list. Uh, set the input channel for that and the output channel for that. Now, in the case that you have a MIDI controller that isn't listed in this control service uh, tab, then you have to set it up in the uh, manual mode and that's in the section below. Here you see all your inputs and outputs uh, of your MIDI controllers. So basically you have to set two checkboxes, the track and the remote for each uh, channel that you want to use. And the track means that it uh, monitors your uh, keyboard, the key, keys you are playing. And the remote will, will do the communication uh, for the knobs and buttons that you have on your MIDI controller. So activate them both and then you're always uh, good. Uh, this, this isn't really needed if you are only using uh, the control surface, but if you don't have that uh, set up, then it looks at this uh, point. So basically that's all there is to it. Okay, now we have set it up. So how does it work? Um, let's load up the WaveState Native. So that's the default sound when you load the WaveState Native. So let's open up the init performance again so that we can uh, create our own uh, patch with the help of the um, MIDI controller. Let's do this quickly. Get rid of the... Set it to gate mode and only leave the saw chrome uh, available. So now we have a saw subtractive synth. Okay, when you use the WaveState Native now, you will see on the screen that only one button is activated. And that means that uh, the button that you are turning on your screen will change over here. Um, if I turn the cut off, you will see that it's, uh, that it's assigned to that button over here. And when I turn up the resonance, it will change that specific button to the resonance. If I change it to, for instance, an amp envelope attack, then it will show the amp envelope attack. Not really convenient to only have one dial assigned to that. So we have to set up the, um, the MIDI controller mapping ourselves for, and we have to do that one time. Now, luckily that is really easy to do. And there are some tricks with that. To set up any device uh, in Ableton um, to a MIDI controller, you click on this arrow. And now we will see the configure button uh, pop up. So when you click this, you will add any parameter to this panel and it will be assigned to your MIDI controller. There are two important things to know. Um, in most MIDI controllers, you can only assign 16 uh, controls because there aren't simply any more mappings on your MIDI controller. 
on the Ableton Push, this isn't really a problem. You can assign to up to 64 and even more if you want to do some tricks. But 64 uh, can be set up default for that. For the Native Complete, 16 is okay. And for the MIDI Fighter Twister, 16 is ook okay. So when you know this, then you know that the first 16 that you select in your uh, device are the most important parameters for that section. Now, the most important parameters for a wave state are the eight uh, mod control knobs. So we want those as the first eight to assign them to them. So we want those eight uh, as the first to assign to the MIDI controller. Now you do that by pressing the configure button. And when we turn the knobs now, you will see that it adds a performance mod knob one. You will see that it adds it over here. When we press the timing, it will add another knob to that one. The sample, the pitch, and you will see that it comes over here. It will add it to that uh, screen. So basically, now we have added eight mod knobs controls. And when we disable the configure, we have now full control over those eight mod knobs. So if we turn knob eight, the speed knob will turn here. And if you turn it on the computer, you will also see that it turns over here. And this works for the MIDI Fighter Twister also, and for the complete native complete keyboard. It all reacts on this uh, setting. Um, so the first eight are the more, most important because that's your default device setup, and we want to use that. But we can assign 16 to most MIDI controllers. So we have to zoom in on the on the push two, and now we are on bank one, and we can set up the next uh, eight parameters. And what we are going to do is go into the overview screen, and important controls are the cutoff and resonance of each layer. So this, these are also eight. So we are going to assign those also to this uh, to this bank. So if we do that, we press first, we turn the cutoff and the resonance of layer A. You see the A layer over here. And you will see that on the push tool, automatically an extra bank is added with the correct uh, names on top of them. We do the same for layer B, layer C, layer D. So now we have full control over layer A, the cutoff and the resonance for layer A, the cutoff and resonance for layer B, you can see it on the screen, layer C and layer D. And again, if we turn it over here, you will see it also over here. And if you want to use the mod knobs again, just press bank one. And we're in the MIDI controller for bank one uh, for, um, for the mod knobs and for the cutoff. Now we have created a basic setup for uh, most MIDI controllers. Now. In most cases, you can stop now and um, you can go to the next step. And the next step is that you don't want to do this every time when you load up the WaveSet native. Now, luckily you can save this as a default configuration. When we do that, it will say it already exists. Do you want to override it? Yes, this is my new configuration for my MIDI controller. And um, now it's the default for this uh, controller. So when we remove the wave state now and we load it up again, you will see that automatically on your MIDI controller, all the per parameters that we assigned, the, that we just assigned are there again. And when we zoom in to the device, we will have the two banks again with the performance knobs and the cutoff uh, assignments A, B, and C, and D. So activate the editor again. Now we have it over here. And if you want to add extra controls, uh, we can do that, for instance, with the Ableton Push 2. Then a logical way to do that is to say, we will add the configure button and again. And we will say, for instance, for layer A, we are going to set up the amp envelopes and the filter envelopes in a bank. Uh, for layer B, we, layer B, we will do the same, layer D and layer C also. So let's do that quickly. Attack, decay, sustain, and release. 
you will see that it adds the amp, amp uh, the amplitude attack decay envelope and uh, release. Let's do the same for layer B. And release. Uh, let's do the same for the filters. Attack, decay, sustain, and release. And now we have for layer A the, the envelopes for the amplitude and the filter available. Uh, let's do the same for layer B. Go to the amp. A, D, S, R for the filter also. For layer C. A, D, S, R. And for the filter, you will do the same. And for layer D, also the A, D, S, R of the amplitude and A, D, S, R of the filter. Okay, now we have filled five banks with uh, the envelope controls and the cutoff controls and the mod knobs. Um, so we can determine what do we want to do next. Well, it would be nice to add some uh, effects to them. So, um, for instance, uh, oh. so for instance, the wet dry of the delay and maybe the reverb also, um, the modulation wet dry and the prefix wet dry so um, you can always see what you, what's happening over here and I'm fine with this so um, hit the configure button again to get out of configure and you see now that we have a lot of control already over the uh, wasted native save that as a new default configuration So that's basically how you assign uh, any parameter in a uh, VST device to your MIDI controller. And we have now loaded up an uh, init, pro init program, uh, set it to gate mode to use it as a subtractive synth. So let's hear how that sounds. You press the layout button to go to the melodic sequencer, um, set the length to two beats for instance, and let's add up a pattern. Okay, nice. And um, you can add some reverb to it, um, some effects, for instance. Because we have that control now, we can set it up one time, or we select it now preset, and use a wave shaper or a guitar amp. Simple distortion, for instance. And let's try to modify the sound now on the MIDI controller.
well, something like that. And um, well, it's just fun to have uh, control over it. And of course, you can record it and uh, do all kind of things with it. But that's basically how to do it. So that's it for now. And I hope that it was clear how to set up your own uh, MIDI controller with the Wavestate Native. And hope to see you again in the next tutorial. Bye for now.